Hello everyone, welcome back to Ludivine. It's been a long time since we've seen you out there in the internet world. I'm gonna update you on everything going on here at Ludivine, what we have going on outside of here, as well as what's kind of going on this year with farms, and produce, and edibles. There's a lot more than you probably realized. If you kind of start catching up with us last year, realize there wasn't a lot of stuff. Well, this year has been absolutely wonderful. I mean, we can't even begin to talk about how much stuff we have. We've had a wet summer, great temperatures, so the fields are producing tons of stuff. Mainly, we didn't have last year, fruit. Oklahoma peaches, blackberries, nectarines, apples, pears, as well as sand plums, which are wild edible. Passion fruit, yes, it grows wild here in Oklahoma, as well as many, many other things. I wanna to talk to you guys about all that. But if you're super interested in what's going on with all this stuff, you can come up to Langston University on July 14th. Myself and Mark Dunham of At Oklahoma Cooks, we will be giving a speech and a talk on using wild edibles and wild fruits and how you can incorporate them into your home and use them and also save a lot of money by harvesting yourself for you people watching your budget out there. Also going on within Ludivine currently and what we're planning on is an Outstanding in the Field dinner. This dinner is going to be held at the end of October. You can go to outstandinginthefield.com and sign up. There's lots of other great chefs in the city helping us out. It's a huge feast in the middle of the farm which is going to be really awesome. You get to do a farm tour, see what we're doing, and we'll be picking and harvesting as we cook right there. So it's a very interactive, very fun dinner. And yes, for you people questioning, there is wine and there is cocktails. So it'll be a lot of fun hanging out on the farm that evening. But what I'm gonna do for you today, knowing that all these wild edibles and stuff are coming out, one of my favorite fruits, it's my favorite. I found it when I got back here to Oklahoma. Everywhere else I worked, I never got to find it, but here I have it. And what it's called is sand plums. You've probably heard about it from your grandparents or recently if you've been getting into wild foods, you know a lot about them. Well, they are everywhere this year. If you went out last year, you went through the thorns and the ticks and you couldn't find them, you're like, that is wasting my day getting stuck and getting ticks all over me and having to shower. I know, I was there with you, but this year it's a lot easier and there's plenty. So, what we have here is about three cups of sand plums that we've harvested, a little bit of basil that we got from Russ's garden actually at home, some white wine, cinnamon, sugar, and gelatin. Now, what we're gonna be doing with this and showing you is basically the process of how you can make your own jellies and then can them to keep these great summer flavors throughout the year. It's something we do here at Ludivine to incorporate it because as you know, we don't have fruit year round here. So if you're into it, go out, get a lot of stuff and you can be eating great fruits all year round. And things to be careful about when you're canning is A, disease by not canning properly, specifically botulism, and A, making sure if you don't do it correctly, then you'll actually lose your product and lose all the time you've spent doing it. So today we're gonna show you how to do it correctly. So, take your sand plums, dump them in your pot, that's it. Take your wine, you're just gonna cover the sand plums. Take your cinnamon right here, dump it right in. Your basil, right on top, and your sugar. And then all you're gonna do with this is put it over medium heat for about an hour, an hour and a half. If you know sand plums, they usually have pits. And you might say, Jonathan, why don't you take the pits out before you do it? Well, it's very difficult to take them out and you actually get a much better flavor with sand plums by not taking them out. The reason is they're quite bitter. And if you take those pits out, the seed and everything is gonna break down and the skin's gonna break down into it, which is really the bitter part of the sand plum, you're gonna end up with a very bitter product. And that's exactly what we do not want. So this, just gonna take it. And that's all you gotta do. It's really, really simple. So after about an hour, you're gonna end up with this concoction. Now, as you can see, it's become a lot more syrupy. And you can see the color now in the liquid. So what I like to do is just kind of smash the sand plums. And by smashing them, you get that flavor that you want from the fruit right out of it. It's gonna be nice and sweet and delicious. And once you've accomplished that, we're gonna simply strain it. By straining it, you save yourself a lot of time by not having to take all the pits out and do all that. Get yourself a nice fine strainer, take your liquid, Simply just pour it in. Make it a little bit of a mess here. A good trick, straining, is give it a little tap. It'll help the juice come out a little bit faster. And you might sit there sometimes and go, God, it's taking forever. Just tap it. If you want, you can take a ladle and actually smash it into it if you're able to do that. And there we go. Now, a lot of times you can bloom gelatin. 
what I like to do is to take it and to start stirring. This is three tablespoons. Just add it in, slowly but surely. Make sure you get it very incorporated. And by having your liquid semi-warm when you do this, don't let it chill down and you don't want it to be too hot. If it's too hot, the second you put that gelatin in there, it's just gonna get really firm on you and there's no way to get in there. Once you have accomplished that, you're gonna take it and pour it into your jar. Now this part's actually important. When you pour it in, you wanna leave some airspace. If you don't leave that airspace, when you go to can it, you're not gonna be able to get the seal that you're looking for. So it's another very important step. When you go and seal it, you end up with no airspace, it won't be able to seal properly. So you're gonna go back months later, open it up, it's gonna smell funny or not taste good. And like, what happened? It's simply because you left no airspace. Then what you do with this is just seal it and quick and easy. Make sure you label it, the date we did it, and what it is. You can also do a tape around the jar, because if you don't, you don't want to be cooking with something you don't know what it is. To give you guys an idea of where you can get this stuff, if you want to do it on a budget, go to Ace Hardware. Why I like Ace Hardware is they have everything you need to can, and all the jars there ready at probably the best price that I've found here in Oklahoma City. You can also go on Amazon and things like that and, and compare prices, but for me, I like Ace Hardware. You get everything you need to do this for about 30, 40 bucks, which is great in my opinion, because you get this stuff that last all the way through. And that's pretty much it. So that's how you do a quick canning process. It's simple and easy. And I want to let everybody know, remember, if you're interested in this and more wild edibles, July 14th, Langston University, myself and Mark Dunham, will be doing a full array of how to forage, what to do with it, what you get it, and how to store it to have it last year round for you. And also don't forget Outstanding in the Field, Big event coming up, really excited to do it, honored to be a part of it. And that will be coming up in October at a farm here in Oklahoma. So that's it, and please remember, if you're interested in this and other things going on at Ludovine, follow us online, we're on Twitter, Facebook, and now Instagram. Thank you so much.